Hi everybody, Mr. Odin's here. Hope everyone is doing well. It's our last lesson on percentages. <laughs> Guys, it's been an emotional journey, but I have loved seeing your work that you've been sending in. It has been uh, of an amazing standard. So well done and please keep it up. Tomorrow, we are starting our new unit, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're going to wait and find out tomorrow, it, but it's going to be amazing and I'm very, very excited to uh, to teach you it. So, one more announcement for you. Wednesday, I'm going to be uploading a big, big shout out video for maths. Okay, a very, very big one. So that means you need to send me your best piece of work today. Okay. Or you need to comment uh, on the YouTube video or just get in contact with us somehow if you want to feature on that shout out video on Wednesday. Okay, guys. Let's do this. We've got one more lesson. Come on! Right, so what are you going to need for the lesson? You're going to need something to write with and paper, square paper if possible. But if you've only got lined paper or blank paper, that is absolutely fine. Now, as I always say at this point, if you do not have these things, please pause the video, go and get them as they are very important for today's lesson, and then press play when you are ready to continue. Lovely. So... The LI today is to solve problems using percentages, fractions, and decimals. Okay, so your first task is to write the LI and the date at the top of the page. So please pause the video, complete the task, and then press play when you are ready to continue. Excellent, I hope you enjoyed my singing there. So, we're now going to move on to our recap. Remember, recapping is very important to strengthen our understanding. So, number one, what does a percentage tell us? Two, what are decimals out of? Okay, three, what is 0.32 as a percentage? And number four, what is 42% as a decimal? So, please pause the video, complete this task underneath the align the date, and then press play when you are ready to continue. Welcome back. So what does percentage tell us? Percentage tells us how many parts per hundred we have of something, okay? It's a good definition. Uh, please use it. Uh, and what are decimals out of? Decimals are out of one, okay? Decimals are out of one. Now, what is 0 0.32 as a percentage? Okay, remember, what, what is percentage? Percentage means out of 100, okay? Decimals out of one, so we need to make our decimal out of 100. So how do I get from one to 100? I times by 100, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So 0 0.32 times 100 is 32 out of 100, which as a percentage is 32%. Excellent, now, we've got to do exactly, so now the next one is what is 42% as a decimal. Now, what is a decimal? Decimal is out of one. What is a percentage? A percentage is out of 100, okay? So, we need to make our percentage out of one. So, how do I get from 100 to one? I divide by 100. Whatever I do to the bottom, I've got to do to the... Top. Okay, so then I've got to do 42 divided by 100, which is 0 0.42, which is 0 0.42. That is our decimal. So 42% as a decimal is 0 0.42. Right. Well done. I'm sure most of you have done exceptionally well, though. If you haven't done as well as you may have liked, please send me an email so I can give you some support. Lovely jubbly. Right, we are now going to move on to our starter. So this is your starter. When was the last time the digits of the year added up to five. Okay, so if we think of a year, I've done this example 2020. Okay, this is a year. And if we add up the digits, okay, so two plus two plus zero plus zero, okay, that equals four. Okay, and so that is not five. Okay, so you need to find the last time, okay, that the digits of the year added up to five. And I'm not going to tell you the answer of this. What I want you to do Okay, actually, I'm going to tell you the answer to this, but I'm going to tell you tomorrow. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to uh, write your answer in the comments below, okay, and tell me, okay, what you think the year was, okay, when the digits added up to five. Okay, so what I'm going to say to you now is pause the video, complete that task, write a comment below, and then press play when you are ready to continue. So, Today is our last percentages lesson. <sighs> but we're doing solving problems. Yay! Right. Some of you may be looking at this and being like, oh, 
No, we're solving problems. This is going to be so hard. But fear not, people. Mr. Rollins is here to help you. Okay, I'm not going to just let you give you a problem and be like, right, go and do it. I'm going to guide you. Okay, you're going to be absolutely fine. But problems are not easy. So your head might, your brain might look like this later. Who knows? Right, let's get cracking. So this is our first problem. John has a 400 footballs okay John has 400 footballs he gave 60% of them to George and 20% of them to Gary how many footballs did John give away okay so this is a typical problem which we could have okay uh, in relation to percentages okay now I'm going to go through with you a step-by-step -step guide of how to answer these questions okay and this is a good step-by-step -step guide so you can you can apply this this step-by-step -step guide to most problems that you'll come across okay so step one okay is to read the question so what i want you to do now is again to yourself just read the question so pause the video read the question properly and then press play when you're ready to move on to step two Excellent. So step two, okay, is to work out what the question is asking us. Okay, what, what is the question asking us to do? Okay, now this question is asking us how many footballs John gave away. Okay, and it says it here in our question. Ooh. How many football, sorry. How many footballs, oh, ooh, what's going on here, sorry. The question is asking us how many footballs did John give away? So that is our question, okay? So what I'm going to write here, what is the question asking us? The question is asking us how many footballs John gave away. Now, question three is how are we going to work this out? Okay, how are we going to work out how many footballs John gave away? Okay, now, John has 400 footballs, okay? It tells us he gave 60% to George and... 20% to Gary okay so to work out how many gave away we need to work out what 60% or 400 footballs is okay as he gave 60% to George and we also need to work out what 20% or 400 footballs is because he gave 20% to Gary okay once we know these amounts how many he gave away okay we will know the total amount of footballs that John gave away Okay, so that's step three. Step three is to plan your route. How are you going to work this out? All right, and then step four is to actually do the calculation. Okay, so 60% of 400 footballs. Okay, how do we work out 60% of 400 footballs? Remember, remember 60% of just means times. Okay, 60% just means times. Okay, and we can't, remember we can't forget that percentage. So we're going to make our percentage out of 100. So 60 out of 100 times footballs so 400 over one and then we just do this top time bot top so 60 times 400 which is 24,000 okay and then uh 10 times one which is 100 okay and remember we always need to simplify so an easy way that we can reduce this uh, is by 10 so we can just knock off those two zeros and then again we can knock off those two zeros. Okay, so then we're left with 240 over one. Okay, so 60% of 400 footballs, okay, is 240 footballs. Okay, so he gave, he gave uh, 240 footballs to George. Okay, now we need to work out how many he gave to Gary. He gave 20% of 400 footballs to Gary. So we need to work out what 20% or 400 is. So, 20% of 400 is the same as saying 20 over 100 times 400. Remember, we're making it 20 over 100 because we're turning our percentage into a fraction, okay? So 20 over 100 times 400 over 1, okay? If we times the top, that's 8,000 times the bottom, that's 100. So 8,000 over 100, and we've got to simplify it. So an easy way to simplify it here, okay, is to uh, reduce it by 10, and then to reduce it by 10 again. So reducing it by 100. Okay, and that gives us 80 over 1. Okay, so 20% of 400 footballs is 20, is 80. Okay, so he gave 80, 80 balls to um, Gary. Okay, now 
That's step four, doing the calculation. Step five is to then complete the question, okay? So the question is asking us how many footballs John gave away, okay? We know he gave 240 to George and 80 to Gary, okay? So to work out how many John gave away in total, we need to add up each amount of footballs which he gave away, okay? So he gave 240 to, to George and 80 to Gary, so we need to do 240 plus 80, and that will give us our total, which is 320, okay? So he gave... 320 footballs away okay excellent so that is how we would answer one of these questions using the step-by-step -step process okay we are now going to go through another example which is slightly different okay so this is it i don't know what it says problem one it should be problem two let me just correct that that's wrong sorry guys i mean it's a very minor error but still, gotta be perfect. So, problem two. Jack this time. Jack has 20 pounds. He spends three fifths of his money on a coat and 30% on shoes. How much money does he have left? Okay? So, here we've got a problem where we've got fractions and we've got percentages. <gasps> so, what is step one? Step one is to read the question. So what I want you to do is pause the video, read the question, and then press play when you're ready to continue. Excellent. Step two is to work out what the question is asking us, okay? So what is the question asking us? Okay, it says, how much does he have left? So the question is asking us how much money Jack has left, okay? After he's, after he's spent his money, how much does he have left out of £20, okay? So I've now worked out what the question is asking us. Now, how are we going to work out how much money he has left? So the question tells us, okay, what percentage and fraction of 20 have been spent, okay? So three-fifths have been spent on a coat, 30% has been spent on shoes, okay? So we need to find out what three-fifths of £20 is and then what 30% of £20 is, okay? Once we know this, we can work out how much Jack has left, okay? So once we've worked out how much he spent on uh, shoes and how much he spent on the coat, okay, we can then work out how much he has left. So that's how I am going to do it. I'm going to find out three-fifths, okay, and 30%, um, and then I can work it out. And then step four is to do the calculation. So three-fifths of 20 pounds, okay, is the same as saying, okay, three-fifths times 20, okay? So three-fifths times 20 over one, okay? So then you just do that calculation. Three times 20 is 60, Five times one is five, okay? So how can we simplify this, okay? It's not, if we first look at it, it may be like, oh, I don't know how to do that because I can't get rid of zeros, but no problem, it's easy. We need to think, okay, what number goes into both of these, okay? And I know that five goes into both of these. So how many times does five go into five? Five goes into five once, so I'm gonna put one there. How many times does five go into 60? Five goes into 60 12 times, so I'm gonna put it there, okay? So I now know that three-fifths of 20 is 12 pounds, okay? So Jack spent 12 pounds on his coat, okay? Now, the next one we need to work out is the shoes. So 30% of 20, okay, the, the shoes cost 30% of 20. So 30% of 20 is the same as saying 30 over 100. Remember, we need to convert the percentage into a fraction, okay? We can't just leave it as a percentage. So 30% of 20 is the same as saying 30 over 100 times 20, 20 pounds, okay, over one. Okay, so we just got to multiply it. So 30 times 20 is 600, and then 100 times one is 100. And guess what, guys, again? We need to simplify, okay? You need to simplify down to the lowest point. So, easy, reduced by 10, reduced by 10. We've got six over one. He spent six pounds on shoes. So 30% of 20 is six pounds. Right, that's step four. 
And then step five is to complete the question. Okay, so the question is asking us how much Jack has left. Like how much money does he have left? So Jack spent £12 on a coat and £6 on shoes. In total, this is £18. Okay, so to work out how much money Jack has left, we need to subtract the amount he has spent by the total amount. So he has £20, he spent £18, so we're, so that's a subtraction. We've got to get rid of £18, okay, which leaves us with £2, okay. So Jack has £2 left. And that, again, ladies and gentlemen, is how we work out a problem-solving question. Now, Mr. Owens is going to have a quick drink of water because uh, his mouth is quite dry today. Lovely jobly. Now, we are going to do another question, but this time, you, my friends, are going to help me. So, Mr. Olins has 60 Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. And let me tell you people, I do love a good Diary of a Wimpy Kid book. Anyway, Mr. Olins has 60 Di Diary of a Wimpy Kid books, okay? He has read two-fifths of them on Monday. He reads 40% of them on Tuesday. How many books does Mr. Olins have left to read on Wednesday? Mm. Mm. But fear not. We've got our step-by-step -step guide to help us get to the answer. So, step one is to read the question. So, please pause the video and read the question. And then press play when you are ready. To continue. Super. So I hope you've read the question. Now, step two is to what, work out what the question is asking you to find out. Okay, so what I want you to do now is pause the video, work out what the question is asking you to find out, write it down underneath, uh, I don't know, your starter probably, um, and then press play and we will go through this. Super. Welcome back, my friends. So, what is the question asking you to find out? Okay, the question is asking us to find out how many books Mr. Olins has left to read on Wednesday. Okay, so it tells you how many I read on Monday and Tuesday. So we need to work out how many uh, that meant I ne needed to read on Wednesday. Okay, so now we need to work out step three is how are we going to find this out? How are we going to find out how many out of the 60 Mr. Olins still has to read on Wednesday? the Wednesday, okay? So what I want you to do now is pause the video and work it out, write it down, okay? How you're going to find this out and then press play and we will go through this. And welcome back people. So how are we going to find this out? Okay, so we know that Mr. Olin's read, uh, oh, we know that Mr. Olin's, I don't know why that's, let me correct that quickly. We know that Mr. Olin's read, sorry guys, so, Right, so how are we going to find this out? Miss, we know that Mr. Olin's read two fifths of the books on Monday and he read 40% of the books on Tuesday. Okay, so we need to work out what two fifths of 60 is to work out how many books Mr. Olin's read on Monday. Okay, then we need to work out what 40% of 60 is to work out how many books Mr. Olin's read on Tuesday. Okay, once we know this, okay, we can find out how many books Mr. Olin's needs to read on Wednesday. Okay, so we're going to work out how many books Mr. Olin's read on Monday, how many he read on Tuesday. Okay, and then once we know how many read on Monday or Tuesday, we can work out how many are left out of the 60 that Mr. Olin's needs to read. So step four is to action this. So what one should do is complete the calculation. So please pause the video, complete the calculation, and then press play when you are ready to continue. Welcome back. So I hope you have got this. So we need to find out what two fifths of 60 is. That's what Mr. Odin's read on Monday, okay? So how do we do two fifths of 60? Two fifths of 60 is the same as saying two fifths times 60 over one. So two times 60 equals 100. Five times one equals five. And then, okay, we need to work out, well then we need to simplify our number. So we've got 120 over five, we need to simplify this. Remember you always have to simplify it. So we need to think, what number goes into both? Okay, I know that five goes into both these numbers. Okay, so I know five goes into five once and five goes into 120 24 times. Okay, so I know now that Mr. Olin's read 24 books out of 60 on Monday. So now we need to find out how many you've read on Tuesday. So this is 30% of 60. 
How do I work at 30%? 60? Remember, you can't just do 30% times 60. So we need to make it 30 over 100. Okay, we turn it into a fraction. So 30 over 100 times 60 over 1. So 30 times 60 is 1,800. 100 times 1 is 100. But we need to simplify. So how do we simplify? Easily, we can just reduce it by 10 here. Reduce it by 10 here. So we've got 18 over 1, which means Mr. Owner's red. 18 books on Tuesday. Excellent. And then step five is to answer the question. So please pause the video now, answer the question, work out how many books Mr. Olin had to read on Wednesday. So please pause the video, complete that task, and then press play when you are ready to continue. And welcome back, people. So we want to know how many books Mr. Olin's needs to read on Wednesday. Okay, so on Monday, Mr. Olin's read 24 books. And on Tuesday, Mr. Olin's read 18 books. Okay, now, so far, Mr. Olin's has read 42 books. Okay, so on Monday, I read 24 books. Sorry, on Monday, I read, yeah, on Monday, I read 24 books. And on Tuesday, I read 18 books. Okay, so if we, we need to add them together to find out how many books I have read. So 24 plus 18 is 42 books. Okay, now, to work out how many books Mr. Olin's has left to read, we need to subtract the number he has already read by the total number of books. Okay, so in total, okay, I need to read 60 books. Okay, on Monday and Tuesday, I read 42 books. Okay, so to find out how many need to read left, all I do is take away the 42 from the 60, which will give me the number that I still need to read, which is 18. This means that on Wednesday, Mr. Rollins needs to read 18 books. Excellent. Okay, I hope that was a success. I'm going to take another quick drink here quickly. Lovely jubbly. So we are now going to move on to our task for today. Superstars, you have two problem solving questions to answer. There are 200 students at Grange. I want to remove 20% of them. How many students do I remove? Okay, so you need to work that one out. And then two, I have 80 pencils. I sharpened 40% of them. How many pencils are not sharpened? And I've highlighted not because that is a very important part of the question. Now, superstars, please follow the step-by-step -step guide when you're answering these questions because it will help you. I promise it will help you to answer them. So please pause the video, complete that task, okay? And then press play when you are ready to go through all the answers. Welcome back. So there are 200 students at Grange. I want to remove 20% of them. How many students do I do I remove? So what you needed to do here was when you went through the process, ultimately you were doing 20% of 200, okay? Which gives you 40, okay? I want to remove 20% of them. So you want to remove 40 of them, okay? How many do I want to remove 40%? So 20% of 200 is 40, right? Now, I don't know why this says one, it should be two. Right, so I have 80 pencils. I sharpen 40% of them. How many pencils are not sharpened? Okay, so what you need to do here is work out how many are sharpened. So you need to do 40% of 80, okay? And that would have told you a number okay, that, you, that, that you need. Now, how many pencils, but we wanna know how many pencils are not sharpened. Okay, so what you needed to have done was subtract 40% from 80, which would have given you 48. So 48 pencils are not sharpened. Okay, now, superstars, if you did really struggle with that, okay, do not worry. I'd advise going over the video again. Okay, go over the video again and then maybe do the questions again once you've done them or if you want some more support or more questions please just send me an email and i will provide you some support now superstars again you have an option now if you'd like to stay for the blue zone task that is absolutely fine but if you do not that is fine you may leave okay and if you are leaving goodbye it's our last lesson on percentages this is very sad but fear not people fear fear not because, because, because we've got another math session tomorrow and that's going to be fantastic. So if you are going, goodbye. If you are staying, yay. Hello, Blue Zone people. Right, you also have three questions. A decorator buys 24 litres of paint. 
when he finishes painting, there is 25% of the paint left. How much paint is left? Next question. Some children hold a bake sale for a local charity and raise $90. 10% comes from selling biscuits. 50% of the remaining money comes from selling chocolate cakes. How much is made from selling chocolate cakes? And then the last question is this. Mr. Rollins eats 80 pizzas every day. On Monday, he gave one quarter of his pizzas. I should say, oh, sorry. On Monday, he gave one quarter of his pizzas away. Right, let's start again. Okay, so Mr. Olin's eats 80 pizzas every day. Okay, it's a lot of pizzas. I don't know how I'm looking so thin, guys. So Mr. Olin's eats 80 pizzas every day. On Monday, he gave away one quarter of his pizzas. Okay. How many pizzas did he give away? Okay, what is this amount of the total pizzas as a decimal? So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to pause the video, complete this task, and then press play when you are ready to continue. Right, welcome back, people. So a decorator buys 24 litres of paint. When he finishes painting, there is 25% of the paint left. How much paint is left? So what you need to do there is 25% of 24 which is six liters okay now some children hold a bake sale for a local charity and raise 90 dollars 10 percent comes from selling biscuits 50 percent of the remaining money comes from selling chocolate cakes how much is made from selling chocolate cakes and the answer is 40 dollars 50 now to work this out this is what you should have done okay what you need to do is work out 10 percent okay because 10 percent of 90 dollars is uh is what they made from selling biscuits and 10 percent of 90 is nine Okay, so uh, they would have had $81 left, okay? And then you need to work out what 50% of uh, 81 is, okay? And that is $40.50, okay? Right, Mr. Olin's eats uh, 80 pizzas every day. On Monday, he gave a quarter of his pizzas, okay? God, I'm loving pizza. So, Mr. Olin's eats 80 pizzas every day. On Monday, he gave away one quarter of his pizzas, how many pizzas did he give away? Okay, so I gave away 20. Okay, so a quarter of 80 is 20. Now, what is this amount of the total pizzas as a decimal? Okay, so then I want to know, okay, so uh, I gave away 20 out of uh, 80 pizzas, so we can write that as a fraction, 20 out of 80, and I wanted to know what that was, what is 20 out of 80 as a decimal? Okay, so... What is the easiest way to do this? Okay, this is, I would, I, you may just know that a quarter is 0 0.25, okay? And if you know that, fantastic. But if you don't, this is another way, easy way you can do it. Okay, so 20 out of 80, okay? So an easy way to do this is we want to, we want to firstly turn this into a percentage out of 100. And once it's out of 100, okay, then we can just divide it by 100 and turn it into a decimal because remember, decimals out of one. Okay, so... 20 out of 80, it's quite hard to turn this into a number out of 100. So what I would do is simplify it to a quarter. And then it is quite easy to do that from then. So how do we get from 4 to 100? Okay, you can get from 4 to 100 quite easy. You just times by 25. Do the same for the top. So you've got 25 over 100. Okay, now that is your percentage, 25 over 100. Now, okay, a decimal is out of 1. Okay, a decimal is out of 1. So what can we do? Okay, we need to make our fraction out of one so 100 to 1 divide by 100 25 divided by 100 is 0 0.25 so that is why 20 over 80 is the same as a decimal as 0 0.25 but you may just know that a quarter is 0 0.25 and that is fantastic if you know that right blue zone if you struggle with that that's fine okay just drop me an email but i'm sure loads of you did well and i've got one more task i've got a challenge and i'm going to tell you lots of you've been saying mr owner's challenges are so easy well if you think this is easy, I'll be very amazed because I think this is quite difficult. So this is your final challenge of percentages. Are you ready? Tommy is playing a maths game. Here are his scores at three different levels. Level A, he got 40, 440 points out of 550. Level B, he got 210 points out of 300. Level C, he got 45 points out of 90. So the question is, at which level did he have a higher success rate? I'm not going to tell you anything at all, okay? 
To answer this question, you need to use all of your knowledge about fractions and percentages, okay? If you get this right, I will be extremely, 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 extremely impressed. And I may even sing your name in the next video if you do this correctly. Right, have a fabulous day and I will see you guys soon. Please send your work in. Goodbye.